Okay, Science 30, so we're going to start today's video talking about immunity. Uh, we've just finished talking about blood, blood disorders. Uh, this video now is going to focus on uh, why you don't get sick all the time and why when you do get sick, you can usually not die and you can get better from it. So um, kind of a good topic to talk about right now, given that we're all in digital learning and COVID-19 has shut the whole world down. Um, well, how does something like that work? How does a virus, like the coronavirus or bacteria, like an infection in a cut, how is it that you can get better from that? Or how is it that they can even get into your body? And why is something so small and something that you can't see so dangerous for you as an individual or as a race? Why do we have to be so careful? So let's just define some initial discussions here first. A pathogen is anything that can get in the body that should be there. So a pathogen can be bacteria viruses, uh, a class of things called protozoans. Anything that can cause disease, biological disease, is considered a pathogen. So bacteria are fundamentally different than viruses, okay? And so we'll discuss pathogens like bacteria different from pathogens like viruses, but in terms of general immune response, uh, typically the response is the same initially. Okay, so hopefully in this video or perhaps the next, I might split this into two, I can describe, by the end of this, you should be able to describe how pathogens in the environment enter the circulatory system. So how do they get in in the first place? Describe various functions of uh, ways the body can stop you from getting an infection. So things like skin or stomach acid. Um, describe what inflammation is. And you should be able to describe how the response works. Okay, here we go. So how does the body protect itself from pathogen? Well. There's a first line of defense and there's a second line of defense. The first line of defense is what we call the barrier response. It's what keeps the pathogens out of the body. The second line of defense is after the first line has been breached. So we have an initial line of defense where the body stops things from getting in. And if that first line of defense, the barriers have been breached and the pathogens have gotten inside of the body, now the second line of defense or the non-barrier responses are going to take hold. And so I'll show you what, that, what I mean here. So barrier responses includes things like skin. Your skin has layers to it. You've got sweat. You've got oil. If you're outside and you're working in dusty environments, your skin on your face is going to get oilier. Some people have naturally oilier skin, but the oil on your face is designed as an adaptation to stop things from entering the pores on your face. Our faces have a lot of pores on them. Uh, the pores enter the bloodstream. And so the body's trying to protect those entryways from pathogens getting in uh, by producing oils, which stops, which build the layer. The problem with the oils on our face, though, is that when dirt or dust gets into those pores and then the oil traps it, then a pimple forms because an infection starts and the body's trying to purge that dust particle out. Um, but the oil itself and the skin itself is an adaptive barrier defense to stop things from getting inside. The hair in your nose, uh, or the, like some people have hair in your ears, the hair in your nose, the hair in your ear, eyelashes, eyebrows, all of these things are designed to stop uh, pathogens or bacteria or dust or particles from getting inside the body, right? By having hair in your nose, it stops you from breathing in big chunks of things. Um, by having eyelashes, it protects your eyes from um, particulates that might be coming into your face and into your eyes. Um, we have cilia, little hairs in our respiratory tract. So your bronchial, bronchioles, uh, your brachia, the tubes, your breathing tubes all have little hairs in them, little cilia, they're not really hair, they're projections, and they help cough and remove things uh, from your respiratory tract to stop them from getting into your lungs where they'll get into your bloodstream. Uh, stomach acid, right? Your stomach acid is acidic so that it can kill pathogens. It's also acidic because it helps break down certain types of food components, but it's acidic um, so that it kills pathogens. Uh, for example, if you were to have improperly cooked chicken and you might have ingested some salmonella, um, the salmonella uh, bacterium uh, will hopefully die because of the stomach acid uh, rather than cause an infection. So even though the stomach acid is inside of your body, we treat it like it's not inside of our blood. So we'll call it a barrier response. Uh, we cough and we sneeze to expel things in the same manner. 
But once those first barrier defenses have been breached and the pathogens have actually entered our bloodstream, now we have what's called the second line of defense. And this is where you might cause something called inflammation. So burning, uh, bruising, uh, the, a lump getting formed. Um, you might get an immune response. And a full-blown immune response is when you have antibodies produced. And we'll discuss those in great detail in a, in a bit here. But I want to start with inflammatory response. So inflammation. Let's say you stub your toe. Um, and, or you cut something like if I, I've had you know cuts in my hand or splinters in my hand and when the splinter goes in and I haven't been able to get it out that portion of my finger or my palm uh, starts to get like red gets inflamed it hurts to touch it you can really feel that splinter in there and it might be there for a day or two or a couple days and it just gets worse and worse and that's inflammation and that's an immune response that's an inflammatory response where my body is trying to get rid of the the um uh, microbe or the physical thing that has entered my body and we're trying to expel it. And so here's the steps of the inflammatory response. Basically, um, white blood cells are going to notice that there has been an uh, infection in the body, so a pathogen of some sort. The white blood cells are going to engulf the pathogen by gobbling them up. We call this gobbling up uh, phagocytosis. So phagocytosis is this giant bear hug that the one of the white blood cells does. It wraps around the pathogen and squeezes it till it engulfs it into its own cell and then destroys it. So you don't want to be bear hugged by a white blood cell. White blood cells use enzymes to digest pathogens uh, so it breaks them down and then eventually uh, you will have uh, an expulsion of that dead cellular waste from the now killed pathogens and so that waste is called pus and so a pimple would be a perfect example something has entered the body the inflammation response begins white blood cells destroy whatever particle has gotten into your your pore and then when it's destroyed those cells you get an inflamed pimple while the little war is happening and at the end when you notice the pimple starting to you know you're ready to pop the pimple the pus that comes out is um, the results of the battle. It's the, the waste products of the dead white blood cells and more importantly, the dead pathogen cells. So the inflammatory response is something that we are all very accustomed to seeing because anytime you've had a pimple, you have watched uh, the effects of this occur under the skin. So inflammation is a way for our body to heal itself or to prevent a major infection because if we can expel it before it really gives any major damage, then life is good. It might be uncomfortable, but life is good. Okay, the immune response. This is a full-on immune response. If the inflammatory response fails, then the immune response needs to start. This is a full-blown blood cell response. And so before we get started, we have to know two different terms, antigens and antibodies. Anti Antigens are like the face of a cell, okay? So antigens are like the face of a cell. Now, every single cell has a different antigen. And, and that's like every single person has a different face. I can recognize the students that are meant to be in my class because I recognize all of their faces. If a student who doesn't belong in my class enters my classroom and sits down, I'm going to recognize right away that, that student doesn't belong in my classroom, and I'm going to ask them to leave because I know they don't belong there because I recognize their face as being... Uh, not familiar, right? It shouldn't be there. And so I kick it out. No different than the blood does. Your blood looks, your blood cells, white blood cells more specifically, that are constantly looking to see the antigens or the faces on every single cell that they come into contact with. These cells are called antibodies. Antibodies are Y-shaped molecules. And these Y-shaped molecules have a very specific shape attached to the ends of their structures, which corresponds or matches very specifically to an antigen. And so in an everyday scenario, your body constantly has uh, Y-shaped antibodies. And these antibodies are looking for things that they match to. Now, in an immune response, we'll talk about this in more specific terms as we, we learn about this in this video, but your body's constantly checking. Your own body cells have antigens, and those antigens, or the face on those cells, belong. As soon as the body sees a face or an antigen that doesn't belong, 
then an immune response is going to occur. So let's take a look here. Um, before we jump in real deep, I want you to know that every single antigen spits for, sorry, fits for one specific uh, antigen. So one antigen fits one antigen fits one antibody. So this antibody is going to match with the shape on this antigen. This antibody is going to match with the shapes on this antigen. This antibody is going to match with the shapes of this antigen. Okay, so we're going to hopefully be able to describe how uh, pathogens develop, how the immune response is triggered, and the roles of macrophages, B cells, helper T cells, killer T cells, suppressor T cells, memory cells, and antibodies. Okay, here we go. So the immune response, we've got antigens and antibodies. Antigens are protein markers. Basically, they are the face of any cell. And they're on the surface of all cells, including viruses, including bacteria, and even your own body cells. Every single cell ever should have an antigen. It should have a face, just like every, every person has a face. And so uh, <coughs> antibodies are used to um, sort of target and help destroy a cell that doesn't belong based off of its antigen. And so antigens are the faces, and they are how we identify friend or foe. Antibodies are produced to help attach to and destroy specific antigens that don't belong in the body. So antibodies are kind of like handcuffs. They sort of isolate and stop an invading pathogen from doing any damage, where then other white blood cells can come in and attack it. We'll kind of chat more specifically here in a second. I want to just spend the last part of this video discussing what these cells do, and then we'll go into more detail in the next video. So macrophages, their job is to engulf pathogens in anything foreign. So remember that big bear hug? That's a macrophage, which is a specific type of white blood cell doing what's called phagocytosis. The macrophage is going to see that a cell has an antigen that doesn't belong. And so the macrophage is going to take that um, cell and bear hug it until the point where it goes inside and it gobbles it up through phagocytosis. And that macrophage is going to help break it down. Another cell in this process is called the helper T cell. Helper T cells are helping to coordinate the immune response and they tell what's called what something called a B cell to make antibodies. Killer T cells do exactly that. They kill viruses and cancer cells by poking a hole or literally going stabby stabby and jabbing a hole inside of that cell membrane. B cells are responsible for producing the antibodies which are going to target specific antigens for pathogens that don't belong in the body. Memory B cells uh, are going to keep a record or a memory of an antigen that the body has previously seen so that the next time we see that antigen in the body we recognize very quickly that it doesn't belong and it needs to be removed so the immune response will be significantly faster and it's memory B cells that are why we take advantage of vaccines and I'll talk to you about vaccines at the end of the next video finally suppressor T cells are going to stop the immune response the most important thing is once you recognize that an antigen doesn't belong and it's part of a pathogen you want to initiate the immune response to destroy that invading cell and stop it from spreading throughout the entire body and harming you. But once you've decided that you've found an antigen, you need to destroy it because it belongs to a pathogen, you eventually need to turn off that immune response. It's like going to war, winning the war, and then never stopping the war. Like you need to stop fighting once the war is over. And so suppressor T cells, stop that immune response. They suppress the immune response until the next time the immune response needs to turn back on to fight a new pathogen. If you don't turn the immune response off, if suppressor cells don't do their job, then you'll have eventually what's called an autoimmune disorder where your body starts fighting itself because it's looking for something to fight and the thing that it was supposed to kill is now gone, but it hasn't turned off yet. And we'll talk about that at the end of the next video as well. Okay, I'm going to leave this video here and we're going to talk about what each of these cells do more specifically in a step-by-step -step process. Thanks guys.